What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video here on Peg City Hockey. Now today, we're going to be talking about a forward that is added to this team in the offseason that I didn't really talk about. I know Zach from the Nolan Hockey Podcast actually made a video talking about him. I never even saw the signing, I think I just for completely forgot about it, it slipped my mind out. I never even really brought it up. But nonetheless, there has been a player that has been really catching everyone's eyes at training camp and to start the first two games of preseason, and that is Saku Menelainen. Now, like I said, I don't know who the hell this guy is, so I thought it would be, be pretty good for the entire fan base to learn something about this guy because he's been stellar so far in the camp and in the preseason, and even though it's two games in out of the six games in total, I think there's a good chance this guy could be playing for a spot on that fourth line this year. The coaching staff is really using him in every role. He's getting opportunities on every side of the ice to play his best hockey, and he's exactly doing that. He's playing the best hockey that I think he's played, arguably, uh, since in his career you could argue he's looking very good but then at the same point this is a guy who's surprising me surprisingly I should say and just surprised me as well his career has been very solid and as a guy that I he probably could be in the league ar already arguably or all very close to it uh, a long time coming for him but yeah without any further ado let's talk a little bit about Saku Manalainen excuse me because He's pretty good. So the Winnipeg Jets signed him to a one-year two-way contract back on July 19th. So not that long ago, but earlier in the summer. Uh, he played in the Liga, uh, Liga last year, or I should say, for Carpat. I know that's probably not the exact pronunciation, but give me a break. You know how bad I am with English words, let alone, let alone words in Finland. Uh, and, or in Finnish, I should say. But nonetheless... There he is. That's his contract. Very cheap deal. One year, two way deal. Just a depth signing to replace guys that we lost. I didn't think anything of this at the time. N not even close to thinking this guy was going to be someone that catches my attention. You go over and you look at his Elite Prospect page to find out some more about him. So you see he's from Finland, uh, 28 years old. So he's not a prospect, really. This is a 28 year old man, a man older than me, way older than me, that is coming into the league after playing everywhere in Europe and having success but not only in Europe but on the world stage you go over and you look at what this guy has won in his professional year he is a uh, one-time uh, uh, u20 gold medal winner for the world juniors he is a Olympic gold medal winner with Finland he won the world championship for the gold medal he's got a silver medal in the world championship and he's a three-time Liga champion this is a guy that's won everywhere the Olympics, the World Juniors, in Liga, and he's just been solid. Like his numbers are great. A 6'4", 200 pounds, just over 200 pounds, left shot, center, left winger, can really do everything that you need to, uh, in, on a modern-day NHLer. And his stats speak for himself. You just look at these stats, and every year he's played professional hockey, he's worked on different elements of his game and has gotten better. And I would argue that this is the year you're finally starting to see him put all this experience into a final complete package and it's been really effective so far early on in preseason and in training camp and it's just really surprising me that a guy like this 28 years old with only 34 games of NHL hockey th technically 30 65 games of North American hockey that is it and this guy this guy's been pretty good everywhere in his career solid numbers and I think this is the type of signing that impresses me because it shows how uh, how versatile I would say the scouting department is not only with prospects but with finding younger unsouted, uh, unused talent in other leagues and giving them opportunity you know the Jets have been able to do that with ex exceptionally well with the backup uh, goaltending position in past years obviously you know Steve Mason didn't work out but you look at Lauren Brossois that was a great pickup from a guy that everyone thought was done in the NHL and they turned him back and revitalized his entire career and he is now still back in the league being a backup with the Vegas Golden Knights you know you look at a guy like Eric Comrie Eric Comrie was waved so many times I can't even remember how many times he was waved because it seems like every time I say how many times he was waved the number goes up and down because I can't remember it was just so damn many they turned him into a consistent NHL goaltender a stable one and now he's got a home in Buffalo on a nice contract the Jets have been able to take these guys that are undervalued and turn them into good players we've seen in the past with a guy like Brendan Tanev as well undrafted bang Gets becomes one of the faces of the franchise in Seattle, a hard-working energy player who's a good goal scorer and is just good all around on the ice, doing things and being a pest and undrafted. This is a guy that I could see, obviously not getting to that you know level of Brendan Tanev, but it's just good to see the Jets finding young talent, even though he's not that young, 28 years old. It's just he's just a weird case, and it makes me like him even more. This is a 28-year-old man that has played 34 games in the NHL his entire career. 
31 in the AHL, spent time in Liga, in the KHL, doing his thing, playing in world tournament tournaments, and just being solid. Look at last year's number with Carpat in Liga, 47 games played, 13 goals, 28 assists, 41 points, with uh, one goal and seven games played in the playoffs, you know? That's not bad. The year prior to that, he had 41, uh, 12 points in 38 games. The year before that, again, lower uh, positioning and stuff like that, not playing the most. But he, he just got better everywhere he went. The year before he went to the NHL with Carpat, again, he had 46 points. Then he gets an opportunity with the Carolina Hurricanes, plays in 34 games, puts up 8 points. Decent stats. Draws into 9 playoff games for Carolina as well. I'm not saying this guy's going to be the next uh, coming of Wayne Gretzky, but good depth is hard to come by, especially the Winnipeg Jets. And to find a guy like this, giving him opportunity, not only giving him opportunity, but he wanted to play in Winnipeg. He had term left on his deal with Carpat, left that deal to come over on a one-year PTO just to try to make the NHL one more time. And he's giving it his all out there, playing the best hockey he's played in a very long time. And I, for one, am all for it. I think that Saku uh, Menelainen is definitely going to be a guy that you're going to hear his name a lot this season, whether it be a full-time guy on the bottom six or one of the first call-up guys and press box guys in case of injury on the moose. I, I really believe that that he is earning the trust every day from the coaching staff. Every time you've looked at him from where he was in the camps and the skates and the practice in the morning and the warm-ups to where he actually ends the night on the ice, that's a guy that earns trust. That's a guy that you can you can count on in a pinch and is making the right decisions almost all the time. That is a very valuable skill to have, especially in a bottom sixer. Now, I could be overhyping him, but I didn't know anything about this guy. So it's just exciting to me to see a guy come out of nowhere with no expectations and play pretty well to start the preseason. So anytime that happens, I'm going to be happy, and I bet a lot of you are too. So let me know what your thoughts are on Sacramento Line, and if you expect to see him make the full-time Winnipeg Jets for this season, I don't know if I do yet. That's going to be a lot of competition down there. I think Mikey Isamot as well it could make a push for that role as well. Hell, if Daniel Horgensen keeps it up, that would shock me, but you never know. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. As always, make sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Check out all the other affiliate links down in the description below. Have a great rest of your day. Peace, love, and positivity. As always, go Jets, go! And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Thanks for watching.